718 Cayman T. We've got a manual gearbox. Oh, what a pleasure that is. This is a car that I have been lusting to get my hands on for a while. Firstly, because the Cayman itself as a platform is something that I'm very fond of. My dad has a Cayman 987 and uh, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the way it sounds, the way it looks. And this being the 718 Cayman, it feels just as good, but so much more better and so much more refined. Now, I'm gonna start with the negatives. I'm gonna start with those straight away. I'm gonna get them out of the way because there's a lot of things I love about the Porsche Cayman T, but there's a few things that I'm not exactly a fan of. The first is the gear ratios. First gear. You're doing almost you're doing almost 45 miles an hour in first gear. Second goes all the way up to nearly 80 miles an hour. And the beauty of having a manual box is that you really want to be in a position to just keep throwing it around and changing gears, which means unfortunately you have to you have to short shift quite a bit to get the most of this brilliant manual gearbox. <laughs> now the second thing I'm a little underwhelmed with is the sound of the Cayman T. And the reason for that is it runs a two litre flat four engine that produces 300 horsepower and delivers about 350 newton meters of torque, which in theory is great, but kind of put your foot down you put your anchors down it doesn't translate into that sonorous noise that you're so used to hearing from Porsche and there was a lot of kind of flack from the uh, 718 when it came out with regards to particularly the 2 litre engine the Cayman S has a 2.5 litre engine but still the lust for the flat 6 that you get in things like the 718 Spider and 718 GT4 there's a big difference in the sound now, this car, with it being 300 horsepower, weighs around 1,350 kgs, which is pretty lightweight. And as a package, it's a brilliant package. It will deliver zero to 62 in about 5.1 seconds, which may not sound like eye-watering speeds, but, you know, for most people, that's all you're gonna need. The other cool thing with this, so this being the T, so what is the Cayman T? Effectively, what the Cayman T is, is that they take a baby base spec Cayman 718 and they throw in a load of goodies in there but they don't have the 2.5 litre engine that you have in the S. So this specific car base is around £51,000 if I remember correctly. With the options that this has in it's closer to around £57,000 which you know is good with all the stuff that you get from it and I'll run through the options in a second but for an extra few grand you could buy yourself a Cayman S and the question really is 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 the Cayman S worth the extra money for that 2.5 litre engine? Now, let's move on to the things I absolutely love about this car. So first of all, let's talk about Miami Blue. For me, Miami Blue in a Porsche is just a winning colour. It's so, it stands out so much. It turns so many heads, it's unbelievable. But it just works on this Cayman T. I really like it. I like the kind of Aphrodite wheels. It just, it works so well. The other thing that I love about this and I touched at the start is the fact that we have a manual gearbox. Now the throw on this box is phenomenal. It feels so good. It's yes, the gears are a little bit long and they're longer than I'd like, but it still really kind of enhances that driver purity. It just feels so great. Oh, the, the other thing that you get with this is you've got the, uh, the option of the sport button. And whilst it may make the exhaust a tiny bit louder, I don't think it really does anything. What it does do is it allows for red matching and it makes you feel like a bit of a hero if you don't know how to heel and toe. Most people would rather do it themselves, but if you're feeling lazy, dump the clutch, it does it for you. There you go, and one more to fur. And it's just a nice smooth transition into the gears. Now being a T, we get the 20 inch wheels on this, which looks stunning. I love the 20 inch wheels on it. I think they're eight and a half inch at the front, 11 J at the rear. So you get untold amounts of grip. And even now in this kind of wet, damp surface that I'm facing right now, 
I still get plenty of grip out of this car. The great thing with the platform of the Cayman is the way it handles. You can really throw this thing around, it feels very balanced. It is a mid-engine car, so where something like a 911 is a rear engine, this Cayman T and the Cayman platform in general just gives you that brilliant mix of it, that engine tone right behind your ears and a very well-balanced car. I really enjoy driving this. My, if this had a little bit more sound and it had a little bit more oomph, it would be a perfect car, which is why I think a Cayman GT4 is such a lusted after car. We rev out at just over 7,000 RPM, or 7,200 to be kind of precise. The performance of this car is interesting because it's a two litre turbo, produces 300 horsepower. Once you get it on the boost, it is great. You know, you do feel that pull, but this is the challenge with the gear ratio. So I'm in third gear right now. I'm doing 40 miles an hour with a national speed. If I put my foot down, wait, 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 and then the boost kicks in, which for most people, you're always gonna have it kind of in the rev band. You know, you're gonna have it in that high RPM. And when it's in there, it really does feel responsive. But some people might be, you know, when you're driving around town, you're normally in higher gears and you're forced to really drop the gears down because you don't have much low down torque in this. In fact, you have hardly any at all. But once, like I said, once you get it in there and if you maximize the gear, go into first, hit the boost, and you are gone, man. It's, it is nippy. And that's the thing, it's that power to weight ratio, 300 horsepower, 1300 odd kilos, it does make for a nippy car. The interior of this car feels premium, it feels lovely. Yes, these seats could be specced a little bit nicer. I would have loved to have seen these with the kind of leather Alcantara that you get in the GT4. Lacks a little bit of carbon fiber, but it's a very nice kind of package for the T. You get things such as a nice infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, you get Bose sound system. The other kind of neat little things that I like is these door cards, they're very GT4 style. So they're not even, uh, sorry, door pulleys. So they've gone and saved weight by removing the door handles and replacing them with kind of fabric rope, which I think is cool. I'm telling you, even with the grip now, we are getting, sorry, even with the wet rope, we're getting a lot of grip with this thing. The other thing such as, uh, you get the sports chrono package on this. So you get the nice kind of stopwatch clock in there. You get the lap time display on the little screen on the right. And uh, you know, if you are gonna track one of these, it's, it's a nice little addition to have. The steering wheel for me looks lovely. Yes, we don't have any of the extra additional buttons on here that you get in like a Cayman S, but this is, purpose of this is like kind of lightweight and pure. That's the whole purpose of the T, is to try and give the driver as much driver purity as possible, whilst keeping the cost down and giving you kind of as much as you can from the base platform. The other thing I quite like about the Cayman is that the practicality of it, believe it or not. There, there is practicality. You get two boots. The other thing as well that we get with this car is the uh, the pass from the Porsche Active Suspension Management System, which is great and you can really feel the difference. So if I take this out of the if I take it out of sport mode or the sport chassis, if you like going to normal, the ride comfort is very nice. It's not completely back braking at all. And bear in mind this is a performance car, it's all about driver purity. But the moment I hit this button, the sport chassis is activated, the suspension hardens up. And anything on the road, any bumps you feel it, which kind of adds to that excitement, I guess. It feels like a proper little track car. The other thing with the Cayman T is of course the fact that it's lowered 20 millimeters more than the standard car. It gives it a much more aggressive look, in my opinion. I think it looks much better with a bit of lowering spring. I think it's lovely. But it does also feel better around the corners as well. And then you get things like torque vectoring as well. You know, that's kind of included as part of the Porsche Cayman T package, which is a great thing to have. And when you think about how much you pay for this, a brand new car, this car brand new, it's 57K. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a lot of car for the money, isn't it? If you can get past the sound, which I'm sure you can do something about with an exhaust, then for me, this you know, it's 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 a pretty good bargain. You know, you keep it on song, you keep it high up the rev range, you enjoy a very pleasurable drive. And this car around some mountain roads 
would be an absolute riot. An absolute riot. And the problem is, is it makes me want to um, drive the 718 Spider and 718 GZ4 even more. And that worries me because ultimately this car, the Cayman T, which is almost like an entry model with some goodies, feels very good to drive. Imagine what the GT4 is going to be like. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's the uh, that's the end of today's video. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. A massive thank you to Porsche GB for providing me with this stunning Cayman T. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really have. Make sure to subscribe for plenty more content. I'm going to hopefully try and get some more cars off of Porsche. And uh, if you like that, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you all very soon on the next video. See you later, guys. Olvidando, olvidando.